Well, in today's video, we're going to go long with the Ruger made Marlin guide gun in 4570. How long, you ask? Well, let's go find out. George here and welcome to Tales from Target Suite where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting and we'll have an adventure or two that will make even a grown man smile. And uh, that is my 300 yard target and if we look back around somewhere up there you may be able to see it or at least I can point it out is the uh, shooting bench and so we are 300 yards down range and that is going to be our adventure today to see if I can get shots on steel at 300 yards at 200 yards and we'll start with 100 yards and we're going to be shooting three different kinds of ammo we're going to shoot the lever evolution 325 grain uh, ftx bullet and we're going to shoot the remington 300 grain soft jacketed soft point uh, we were going to shoot the um, federal uh, load but uh I ran out. And then we're going to shoot, believe it or not, the uh, Hornady Sub-X, subsonic 410 grain Sub-X bullet uh, down here at 300 yards. I hope we have enough travel on our scope that we're going to use. And in fact, let's go back and talk about the setup. We'll get started. Well, our hardware for today is my Ruger made Marlin 1895 guide gun, 4570. Great gun, I really love it. And I have borrowed my son's Vortex Strike Eagle 1x8x24 uh, scope for the test. Um, it's not an ideal scope, but uh, it's what we're gonna use for today. And I've taken all of the ballistics data, the uh, muzzle velocity, ballistic coefficient, uh, bullet weight of all three um, rounds that we're gonna shoot today. I've run them through the ballistics, so the Hornady ballistics calculator. And it's given me some numbers, and it has worked so far on the Hornady Lever Evolution 325 grain FTX bullet. So I am on steel at all three yardages, 100, 200, and 300 yards, using the ballistics calculator. But actually, I have zeroed, and I'll show you what it looks like here. I've actually zeroed the rifle at 100 yards, and so you can see on the, under the column, come up MOA, I'm at zero at 100 yards. And then at 200 yards, I need to add in 5 MOA of elevation, or 4.7 MOA of elevation. It turns out that uh, when I was actually shooting the groups that I needed to do 5 MOA. And then at 300 yards, it says I need to come up 11.6 MOA from my zero point. Um, but uh, I believe, and we'll validate that here with some more shooting, but I believe I need 13 MOA to uh, get into the center of our 300 yard target which you saw from my drive down there, that uh, that 300 yard target is the silhouette target. So with that said, let us let me shoot three groups here for you guys and girls, and, and we'll start at 100 yards. All right, two, two shots, 100 yards. All right, 100 yards, let's move out to 200. 
Okay, I'm gonna adjust that scope from zero to five. I said I need to go up five MOA. There's four and there's five. All right, 200 yards. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, we're on at 200 yards. Okay. Wow, I can see that from here. Those two shots are reasonably close together. They're a little bit high and a little bit right. But uh, wow, 300 yards with the uh, lever action uh, Marlin 1895 guide gun. That's a testimony to both the guide gun and also the uh, ammo from Hornady. So, uh, all right, let's get set up now with, uh, we'll get back to 100 yards and we'll start shooting the Remington 300 grain semi-jacketed hollow point. And I'm gonna start with the uh, scope back to the same zero that we use with the Hornady F uh, Lever Evolution ammo. We'll see if that gets us where we need to be at 100 yards. If not, we'll make an adjustment. And I've made that adjustment to 5.5 MOA from 100 yards. Okay, the center of that group is just about an inch low and about two and a half inches uh, center to center on the bullet. So uh, pretty darn good shooting for a lever gun, not from my perspective, but from the lever gun's perspective and that 150 year old this year, 150 year old cartridge. Okay, it says come up MOA is 13 for 300 yards. I think that's gonna be too low, but we'll try it. So I'm gonna go to 13 here on the scope on the elevation turret and uh, we'll take a shot and see if we're on target. Well, what I had felt to notice is the wind had gone from calm to about a seven mile an hour crosswind. And, um, and so for the next few shots, I was kind of struggling to uh, get on target. But my last two, well, here they are. But now let's shoot the, this is the one I've really been excited about is the uh, is the Hornady subsonic ammo and my goodness the uh, <laughs> the trajectory at <laughs> at 300 yards is almost 10 feet so that's a drop of 111 inches with a 100 yard zero 
So, um, uh, so the come up MOA for that uh, for the the, the Hornady subsonic ammo is 35 MOA. That's a ton, and that's one reason that I stayed with this scope is because it has a 30 millimeter tube, and that gives me a lot of vertical and horizontal adjustment as well. But it allows me to to easily absorb that 35 MOA adjustment. So let me go uh, paint the targets again and uh, move the camera back to 100 yards and we'll start this process all over again with this 1,050 foot per second projectile at 300 yards. That's going to be good enough for us to start out at 200 yards now. Now I can use the ballistics calculator because it shows zero at 100 yards. Now I need to go out to 200 yards. That looks like a come up of 16.6 MOA. So let's, let's do 16.5 and see if we're on target. 200 yards, Hornady subsonic. Ammo. 410 grain, by the way. 410 grain bullet. This is a really heavy bullet. Traveling really slow. Okay, a sandwich, uh, some head scratching, uh, some just some time to uh, rethink everything, and uh, I have actually gotten shots on steel again now at um, at 300 yards with this subsonic Hornady ammo. But instead of being up at the 35 MOA range that um, that the Hornady ballistic calculator calls for, I'm down at 31. 31 MOA. And so let's see, um, and I've got the downrange camera going, and uh, let's see what happens. Well, I'm going to call that a wrap. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take a look at all of those plates at 300 yards and then we'll uh, kind of summarize this. Well, what a fun video to make. Frustrating at times, but uh, wow, it was fun. And getting shots on steel with all three of those loads, um, wow, I wasn't sure we were going to be able to do it. But uh, gosh, the FTX bullet, the lever evolution from Hornady, one MOA or so at 100 yards, at 200 yards, even here at 300 yards. Fantastic performing, big, heavy, slow, relatively slow bullet. The um, 300 grain semi-jacketed hollow point from Remington, fantastic at 100 yards and 200 yards. And even here at 300 yards, once I figured out the um, elevation and the wind, those last two shots were pretty close together here at 300 yards. So. So that was uh, heartwarming. The really super slow subsonic ammo, well, it was the most fun to get down here, 
but I did burn through three boxes of that ammo uh, just working through the details and even then the whatever it was that last uh, group that I put on paper uh, or on steel down here 300 yards uh, was all over the map so I have no idea what was behind that but I do know the wind was a factor and um, with a wind drift of the subsonic ammo the wind drift was about 11 inches even with the 300 grain uh, Remington I pulled up the wind drift on that at a seven mile an hour wind the wind drift was uh, five inches so so that begs the question would I use either any of those loads for hunting at these ranges and the answer for me is absolutely not not only would I have to get the yardage exactly right but I would also have to get the wind drift right and be able to dope properly for the wind and that's something that I have never been able to do I'm not interested in learning um, it's just never been my thing and so if you can't accurately dope the wind make sure your yardages are correct then a humane shot at 200 300 yards is not possible so I'll let you guys and girls uh, judge your own skills and make that call that's that's uh, my two cents um, but it was an expensive video to make. This is probably the most, aside from buying a gun, um, I have never had a video cost this much. Um, six, six boxes of factory ammo, uh, completely empty up there on the table. And uh, that's $50 plus ammo. So this was a $300 video to make. And I normally don't pitch this. Doesn't, I don't feel comfortable with it. But um, my bookkeeper says, please do. And so if you would like to support me on Patreon, there is a link in the description. Um, but if you would feel more comfortable supporting me on a one-off basis, like per video, there's a new feature that YouTube has afforded to me, and it's called a Super Thanks. And I'm going to show you right here how to get to that Super Thanks. And, um, and it's just based on, it's a one-time gift based on that video. And um, you pick how much you want to give, and uh, it comes through Google, Google Pay. Um, but if you'd like to support me through a Super Thanks, uh, either way, that's great, and I appreciate it. Appreciate my patrons that have stuck with me all these years for sure. But more importantly, if you're this late on the video, I can't say thank you enough um, because uh, so many people bail out. You know how YouTube is, and people bail out early in a video, move on to something, a greener pasture. That's just the nature of social media, this type of social media. But you guys and girls have stuck, stuck around to the end, and I am so thankful for that. And with that said, I think I'll just say, Thank you one more time, and I'll see you in the next video.